This is Nabil Ansari here, developer of the Tokyo Scoring Engine, proud to present the complete tutorial on our groundbreaking new look-ahead system. At long last, Tokyo Scoring Strings 1.0 has been released, and the iconic sound of Japan's Muroya strings, recorded in Tokyo's Sound City Studio, is now at your fingertips. When this library was pitched to me by Andrew Aversa, our project lead, I decided that it deserved a new and innovative way to create accurate and responsive string performances with a fast workflow, to harmonize with the notion that Japanese string players are best known for their agility, consistency, and reliability. The Look Ahead system is our new experimental feature that accesses future MIDI data in order to analyze the composition. In simpler terms, it looks ahead in the composition to see what you've written before playing back, as opposed to most virtual instruments which play back MIDI immediately in real time. This allows the engine to adjust the performance of the samples so that they play accurately to what you write. The system supports a highly intelligent polyphonic legato, sound quality improvements by playing samples with full attacks, an optional simplified articulation system that drastically reduces reliance on key switches, and automatic legato speed analysis. Now that you know what Look Ahead is, let me show you a piece of music I wrote called A Celestial Promise. The MIDI data for this piece is completely quantized, and there's only one key switch in the whole piece, which is the tremolos you hear during the start. I'll do a full breakdown video of this piece as a follow-up to this tutorial. Now let's dive in and learn how to use the look-ahead system. The latency of the system is a full second, or 1000 milliseconds. The latency is compensated by the included plugin, or can be compensated using negative track offset or manual delay reporting in your DAW. Any composers familiar with Note Performer, a latency-based playback enhancement for notation software, will feel right at home with the one second delay. This means that you cannot record live when look ahead mode is engaged, and you'd want to record in a mode like zero latency instead and clean up your MIDI for the system to analyze afterwards. Additionally, look ahead only operates while your DAW session is currently playing. Naturally, this means if you're just playing at your keyboard, you won't really notice a difference. 
While paused, the engine effectively behaves in standard mode like normal, without the one second latency. Setting up your workflow for look ahead is incredibly easy and takes only two steps once you have all your patches loaded. Step one is to click the large look ahead engine mode button on the bottom right of the screen to switch away from standard mode. If you're vision impaired, you can also use the engine mode host parameter automation, which is also linked to MIDI CC number nine by default. In this case, the maximum value is the look ahead engine mode selection. Once look ahead engine mode is engaged, then you'll notice while your session is playing in the DAW, the Tokyo scoring instruments will sound completely off by one second, which brings us to step two. Step two is to compensate the latency to get all your tracks back in synchronization so that look ahead will be engaged, but the latency will be corrected. We recommend using the included delay compensator plugin by adding it as an effect on each mixer track that we have a Tokyo scoring strings patch on. The idea is to tell the DAW that this track is going to be one second late. The DAW will then use plugin delay compensation or PDC to make all the other tracks in the session wait in order for everyone to play in time again. Depending on your DAW, the visual playback cursor may or may not be correctly in sync. Today, I'm using Studio One Pro 5, which very conveniently syncs the playback cursor to where it should be. If for some reason the delay compensation plugin isn't working for you, check your DAW's manual or tutorials on how to either apply negative track offset, in this case, negative 1000 milliseconds, or manually report latency on mixer tracks, in this case, reporting a latency of 1000 milliseconds. Now that we have look ahead set up, let's write a simple example using an E minor scale. I'm going to be writing in the notes manually because that's my preference, but you can also use your DAW's step record feature, or you can record the MIDI in live and quantize it after the fact. Now, if I disengage look ahead by switching back to standard mode and disabling the compensator plugin, we can see what a difference it's already made. It's automatically triggering legato. And I can also add a simple harmony to the scale and we see polyphonic legato in action. Legato in Look Ahead is only processed for notes where the starts and ends are at the same time. This means that note overlaps, for example a 16th or 8th note long, will actually not be considered legato. This is because the system needs a reliable way to determine that you want notes to change in order to decide that they are legatos, and long overlaps are how the system assumes that a new voice is entering the texture. By default, the articulation mapping is the same as standard mode, but the real strength of Look Ahead lies in the Easy Artic system, which I'll show you in the next section. This optional mode of Look Ahead is designed to expand the possibilities of what you can do in a single MIDI track, while giving you an easy and efficient method of switching between the Arco Sustain and the various shorts. In version 1.0 of the Look Ahead system, you're still required to use key switches if you want to access tremolos, trills, or harmonics. The idea behind Easy Arctic is that note velocity tells the system whether you want connected or separated notes. We have two regions for this, the legato region and the basic region. Think of it as splitting the velocity range into two separate velocity ranges. The legato region is velocity 1 to 63, and the basic region is velocity 64 to 127. In the basic region, articulation selection is done by analyzing the note duration. Notes under 10 milliseconds are pizzicato. Above pizzicato, notes under 200 milliseconds are spiccato secco. From there, notes under 300 milliseconds are spiccato. Notes under 400 are staccatissimo. Under 500 are staccato. Under 700 milliseconds are decrescendo shorts, or sforzando shorts if max velocity. Notes under 900 milliseconds are decrescendo longs, or again, sforzando longs if max velocity. For any note durations beyond, the system will use a long articulation that you currently have key switched. By default, this is Arco, but be aware, this is an Arco that doesn't support legato transitions. As an important note, contact doesn't support notes overlapping themselves. 
even if they're different articulations. So be sure when adjusting durations that you don't allow this to happen, as contact will give incorrect instructions to the Tokyo engine and your results might be unexpected. For writing connected phrases, we'll edit velocities to be in the legato region. In the legato region, we can choose slurred legato by writing in the lower half, velocities 1 to 31, and bowed legato in the upper half, velocities 32 to 63. If you want the portamento versions of bowed and slurred legato, you can automate the sustain pedal, or CC number 64, to engage it at the time that you want portamento instead of legato. Keep in mind that even though you can enable legato on the tremolo and trill articulations in the user interface, they aren't currently supported in the legato region, and all legato region notes will be the arco sustain. We're hoping to expand this in 1.1, so stay tuned. By making use of this special workflow, it's very easy to write multi-articulation polyphonic parts within the same MIDI channel. Let's look at an example. Notice how I can write uninterrupted chords with various short articulations all around. Try this with our full ensemble multis and you can write an entire string orchestra in one MIDI channel, with as much polyphonic legato and as many short articulations as you want. Now let's talk about the other two options we see on the screen here. As a side note, it's not currently possible to automate these, but you can expect to see that in a future update. Pure Attack allows samples to play fully uncut. In standard mode, the attacks of samples are actually cut using the sample offset parameter so that the note will play in real time in a satisfying way. This is great for playability, but you lose some of the realistic noise that happens prior to the note as a result of the bow. Normally, it's unreasonable to leave this noise in because the samples would feel too delayed when playing at the keyboard. But because Look Ahead is designed to synchronize future MIDI, it can actually play the samples early enough to retain all of that pre-transient noise while having the actual note play where you want it. Let's listen to an example. Here is a passage of Spiccato's first without pure attack and then with pure attack. Naturally, because it's playing full samples, the sample offset parameter on each articulation is ignored. The exceptions are any transitions, like rebos and legatos, and the release types. Now, let's talk about the legato speed function. Normally, in a library that offers different legato speeds, you would use velocity to control the desired speed setting, or in our case, you could also automate the legato speed knob manually. However, with this option engaged, Look Ahead will simply pick the speed that fits for the passage, making sure it always has the time it needs to complete note transitions. So let's see it in action. I'll write a melody starting with 16th notes and we'll see what happens. You can see the profile selection actually react dynamically during the passage. And as a quick sequencing tip, anytime you have fast notes, you should always automate towards non-vibrato. This is because it's not really natural for a string player to play vibrato when their fingers are moving around. For this reason, your mockups won't sound quite realistic if you don't pay attention to the level of vibrato. Lastly, if you're a composer who prefers to record parts, the main draw of Look Ahead, which is automatic synchronization, is sort of already taken care of by your own performance work. But if you'd like to input notes on the keyboard while still allowing Look Ahead to be fully utilized, then you still have some options available. The first is to use your DAW's step record feature to input notes. Here you can see me turning it on and then inputting a scale run on my own MIDI keyboard. 
Another option is to record live in zero latency mode. This will let you hear the notes instantly as you play them, but with a reduced sound quality. You can then edit your MIDI to get the performance that you want. For legatos, you want to snap together the note starts and ends. Some DAWs, like Studio One, have simple macros that allow you to do this with the press of a button or key binding. If you want your performance to be off the grid, for example, for the sake of humanization or ametric music, you could also use your slice tool in order to create an exact meeting point, and then just clean up the ends afterwards. Or you can quantize your performance to the grid and then slide the meeting points around manually, but this depends what features are available in your DAW. It's really important to talk about parameter automation, since DAWs all implement it differently with respect to PDC. The look-ahead system by default automatically delays parameter automation on all user interface controls, including dynamics, vibrato, and expression. However, some DAWs already delay the parameter automation internally, and if that's the case for you, the automation will actually end up overcompensated and be late by one second against your performance. If you find this happening, you can turn off the UI Parameter Sync option in the small menu located at the upper right corner of the Look Ahead Engine Mode panel. As an additional note, when using Look Ahead, there are two quirks we have to deal with. Number one is that the visual positions of controls that you're automating in Look Ahead will not line up with the actual performance that you hear. In other words, the parameters will process correctly and sound correct, but they will visually appear offset. This is actually not possible for us to fix. In contact, we can't actually delay the visual animation of knobs and buttons. Additionally, if you are using the UI parameter sync, you won't be able to adjust parameters in real time while playing back the session, as the session playback is what triggers the parameter sync, so any adjustments you do will be interpreted as automations from the DAW. We're looking to tackle problems like this to make the experience even more seamless in future updates, so be on the lookout. That concludes a full overview of all the information required to make full use of our look-ahead system. I recommend bookmarking this video and also our product manual, and also re-watching periodically to internalize all the small details and especially the quirks. I'm incredibly proud of this feature and incredibly thankful to my project lead, Andrew Aversa, for investing in the research and development, and to the rest of our sample editing and quality assurance team for their work and continuing work in ensuring that the samples play reliably and consistently. And of course, to our Japanese team for delivering us such incredible performance recordings. This is Nabil Ansari, senior developer of Impact Soundworks and developer of the Tokyo Scoring Engine. Now go play with your new strings and show us what you're made of. Mm -hmm.